Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my channel, Data Driven Decisions. This is video three of this um, personal finance project that I'm getting back up and running for myself. So, um, you know, for for a very long time, I've been I've had this personal finance ecosystem initially using uh, Mint um, to, to, to combine all of my financial accounts into one transaction table, take that transaction table, bring it into BigQuery and, uh, and analyze it in Power BI. Now, Mint is gone. Um, Intuit moved everyone from Mint onto Credit Karma and that app is terrible. So uh, I'm using personal capital now for what Mint was doing. And uh, you know, in the last video I went through personal capital showing all the work I had to do there why where I had to define every single transaction from February all the way to present date um, and um, I had to create the necessary buckets that um, were as similar to what they were in mint as possible I ran into a problem where you can only have a maximum number of buckets um, in personal capital and where I had way more in mint so um, I couldn't create all the buckets that I had had so um, in order to get to the most granular category, I had to do text mining in BigQuery where I, uh, based off of the, the category and the description, I classified it into a more granular category uh, of spend. Um, so let me share my screen. As far as, far as today, I do got that um, transaction table all, all ready and, it's, and I'm, I'm looking at it in Power BI. You know, the the difficulty was taking the mint table, which was old, and the personal capital table and stacking them on top of each other. What's so difficult about that is, uh, you know, the, the fields have to be the same, the schema has to be the same, the same, but most importantly, the attribute values across the two tables need to be the same. And that's not something that would produce an error as you join. Um, you just have to do that. Um, and you can see it in Power BI, whether they're merging correctly or not, but, um, you know, you really have to get the tables to be exactly the same, the same attribute names, uh, most importantly. And that really was the, the hard work. Um, but I, I got it done uh, all in BigQuery and, uh, and I have it up and running in uh, Power BI. And I'm using that to fill out this Excel workbook that I've had since the beginning. This, that was where it all started, uh, just Excel. 12 years ago, just started uh, measuring my personal finances. And uh, it's it's my, mostly two two workbooks, but uh, the first one uh, just by month, uh, every month I just track, you know, the, the amount I have in every account, how much I spend in each category, and just most importantly, look at my net worth, see my assets, see my liabilities, see my uh, investment interest, uh, see how much I make, see how much is taken out of of my pay, see how much goes to retirement. All that gets analyzed and it's been in, analyzed in um, my Excel workbook. Let me share my screen and I'll show you what, what I've been doing. So here is the transaction table that um, I got working. And if, if I were to just go to all of 2024, you see that um, 20, January is mint and the rest of the year is, is personal capital. And, um, Everything's merging correctly. Um, it all looks good. This is, you know, four and a half months worth of data right here showing all my spend buckets, all my account buckets, just everything spend for year to date. Um, and uh, I love that. Um, you know, this is the most granular table I have. So having this, uh, it's going to allow me to fill up all the other tables that I still have to finish um that mostly get fed off of excel so um you know what i'm doing through right now is i'm just kind of going month by one month starting with february and uh and this spend bucket right here is what i enter into excel uh this is this the original spend category that i've had uh all all along so um yeah so um you know this is the Power BI workbook. I'm still working on getting everything up and running, but I got the transaction table built. I got everything up, up and running and, and personal capital for myself. And I'm using those two tools just to uh, fill out this Excel workbook that uh, I have, starting with um, 
this is the monthly budget table. So um, at the beginning of every month, I have to fill out um, this information right here. This is all the account value information, how much money is in every account. Um, but I can retroactively fill in the rest of it, uh, such as spend. And I'm going through the process of filling out the spend, the actual spend for each month um, using uh you know this right here this is just gives me it so easily and um i'm taking that and this is the the main excel workbook that just at, on a monthly level uh snapshots everything about my finances and um you know it starts off with with pay um the yellow line is is march that was what i was currently working on i just finished it um but it starts with with how much I make and then how much gets taken out pre-tax based on, you know, medical, based on taxes, based on uh, retirement, HSA. And then uh, then it gets to my uh, net take home. Uh, there's some other forms of pay that I might make or such as like credit card rewards. So so I get that net take home and then I got spend. So now I got I got the first piece of cash flow, my net take home. Now I got to get the expenses. So I categorize every spend category right here, and I get to total spend right here, um, and that gets me to um, cash flow or what I call uh, money to move right here. And then with the money to move, um, I forecast or I bucket what I'm going to do with that money, whether it's negative or positive. If it's negative, I got to find out how to pay for that loss. And if it's positive, I would just have to find out where to put that extra money. So uh, this is, you know, for the future, um, this tells me where, what's gonna change in the accounts to make up for the net, the, the calf, cash flow loss. So in this situation, I just really acquired a lot more credit card debt. Um, and then uh, now we get to the account information right here. These are all my accounts and the amount in each one of them, all of them. And then um, it gets to, you know, total investment amount and interest, rate of return. Uh, that's like investment uh, stuff. And then I get at the, like, the high-level stuff, uh, my net de debt, net liquid assets, uh, net retirement, net assets, and then finally, most importantly, net worth right here. And that's really it. That's kind of what I've been tracking my whole working career. Um, you know, this is a, you know, this table's got 12 years worth of data and, uh, you know, it's got a lot of columns. Um, I'm bringing this into, into Power BI, but I first have to finish it up uh, and get it up, up to date. But I always want to keep this alive just because it has the most history it's got history ever since i started working so um you know it's it's very vital to me so yeah that's what i'm doing i'm filling out uh, my excel workbook and then you know these are two very big pieces to um big query and then power bi i have uh you know many other um you know dashboards like here's a spending one that's built off of um uh, the Excel workbook that I want to get up and running. Um, you know, I, I have about, you know, 12 or so dashboards. Um, I do want to clean up all the, the Power BI frame, you know, get a front page, um, you know, build better dashboards, um, you know, just make this really extensive for myself. I, I enjoy Power BI very much. So, um, you know, it's just, it's great to have a personal project to do what I do professionally. So, um, you know, it, this is something that will live with me forever. Um, you know, just very happy that, um, you know, I got this dashboard up and running. Um, so cool. The tracks, you know, all my spending. It's got it all in these categories, you know. So um, we're, we're just looking at February of 2024. Here's all the home spend. Here's everything with food. So it's just really great. You know, I got other categories. This is based on uh, how I spent it, what card did I use to spend. So mo some on checking, that's basically the mortgage. And then a lot goes on credit card. Um, 
So yeah, I'm really happy to have this live. I'm using this dashboard to fill out um, my Excel workbook just to do it easily. Uh, I'm really figuring out the new system now that I'm using personal capital instead of Mint. How I'm going to refresh this on a monthly basis. And, uh, you know, most of the work that I was doing today has just been in BigQuery. So, um, you know, I wrote a, a long heap of code, um, you know, to uh, to combine the tables. So, um, you know, the, this is the Mint transformation, all this code right here that you see here. And I pretty much had to do all the same, but slightly different for personal capital. Um, so here's the end of the mint, and then here's the start of personal capital. I first had to bring in um, missing transactions. So these are our hard-coded transactions. I have an Apple card that doesn't sync to personal capital. So I just had to do that. And then um, now I'm uh, defining all the accounts information right here in this line of code. And then I'm now I'm defining category. Um, I, here is the text mining that I'm doing. So like I said earlier, um, the personal capital buckets are not, a, you can't have as many as what I had in Mint. There's a cap. So I had to get more granular in the category by uh, text mining. Um, that's what you see, you know, when category goes automotive and description like this and that, then service of par or parts, however, something else than toll road. So um, this is text mining, basic text mining, um, you know, and this is something that I probably am going to have to keep tweaking, especially for the next few months um, as new transaction categories come into the picture. I just got to make sure that everything's been bucketed correctly. Um, here I'm adding other category information. Um, to it you know now that i got the most granular category it's very easy this code it's just a copy of every single category and then putting it into uh the the lesser granular ca buck spend category so i'm i have now five hierarchies i had four original and a new personal capital one and uh here uh, you know i'm defining all those other categories um pretty easy and um here I'm doing uh, text mining on the description to find the store of which I purchased it from, you know, whether it be Subway, whether it be Harris Teeter, um, just anything, whatever it's from, you know, give it the, the store name, where did you buy it? Um, so that's a lot of text mining right there. Um, this is where I add, uh, this is where I add the numeral to uh, every single category. So I want every category to have a number and a value um so this is me adding a number to it so this is great for for ordering uh to order a field by a number uh rather than alphabetically um and it's also good for um i turn this uh this table into a data model um you know with account dim table a spend category dim table and these numerals really help me make sure that i have my primary keys right so um you know, I add numerals, numbers to every single category. Lastly, I order the fields, make sure that I every single field exists between Mint and Personal Capital in the exact same order, and every field is the exact same format um, so that it stacks appropriately. And this right here is where it stacks. So uh, just a simple union of the two tables right here is what stacks it. Um, and then I do some last minute data manipulations areas where I just some last minute cleanup I'm going to do right here. And that's that, that was, um, what the, the stack of these two tables was, that's really was the hard work. Uh, it did take a long time. I was writing code for a good, um, you know, 12 hours. So, um, a lot of code, uh, just a lot of finding errors and fixing it. Um, just making sure that it's configured correctly. And there's probably still errors yet I, that I've yet to find, um, but I'm just going to keep working with it and keep finding as many as I can so I feel more confident with the end result. Um, so, yeah, that's really all the code I wrote in BigQuery. And, uh, you know, 
it uh, it refreshed appropriately in Power BI. So now I got this Mint transaction table. I'm using it to fill out my Excel, and uh, that is feeds a lot of other dashboards that I plan to show you and get up and running. And uh, yeah, I just feel good. I'm very close to having this ecosystem back up and running. I'm very happy that personal capital suited uh, with what I needed to be done on the export of the transaction file. Um, so very happy. Another one caveat about uh, personal capital, it does allow for split transactions, split transactions, but when you export the CSV, it doesn't come out right. It, it, it only comes out as one row. It needs to come out as two rows with different categories, but it doesn't do that. So um, it comes out as one row with the original category. So be careful of splitting and personal capital. It's really not going to be of value to you on the export and in Power BI. So um, what I'm going to try to do is just make sure that, um, you know, my transactions are granular. I'm not, um, you know, the only place I can't do it is like groceries where I maybe buy some dog food and some general merchandise along with my groceries. I can't split that receipt into its categories, but for many other things, I can just make sure that I only buy one thing. Like if it's online, you know, one of every category. So every transaction is of the same category because splitting is off the table. So um, that's that with day three of uh, this personal finance project. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned. Take care.